Okay, so module three, homework one, we're looking at uh, radicals. So that's your square root. So square root symbol is called a radical sign, or you can call it the doghouse. Uh, sometimes I just say root, okay, for it. Um, the root or the index is going to be what root you're taking. So the understood root of a radical is going to be the second root. Okay, not the first root, because what this indicates is a number multiplied by itself however many times. Okay, so a square root would be two times, a cube root would be three times, etc. So we can't multiply a number by itself one time because you wouldn't be doing anything, you're not multiplying. So the root here is two, and then the number under the radical is called the radicand. So if we want to label these, we can. Um, the number that is in front of the radical is simply just the coefficient. I can type in here. This three here, that's going to be your root, your radical sign, is right there. And then our radicand is going to be seven. And then if the index isn't shown, it's implied to be two again. And then like radicals, we'll have the same radicand and index, so the same exact ending. Okay, so to find the square root of a number, we find what was squared, meaning what was multiplied by itself, to get the radicand. So we say here, okay, the square root of 25 is what? We say, okay, well, that was five. Sorry. This is being a little finicky. Five times five. It is, I gotta turn this off and turn it off again, on again, because it is delayed. All right, let's see if that works. There we go, five times five. So we say that 25 is five squared. So the square root of 25, is five. Okay, however, the square root of negative 25 is not going to be a real number here because the rule is it has to be a number times itself. We know that negative five times positive five gives us negative 25, but those aren't the same number, it's not times itself. So this one here, we say this is not a real number, and we're going to deal with this in module four. Okay, now cube root is a number times itself three times. So for the cube root of 27, we say, okay, what times itself is 27? Well, that's going to be three times three times three. Okay, so the cube root of 27 is three. Now, the cube root in your calculator, on this calculator, it's in math. Um, I think on the other calculators, there's just an x root. And you just put 3, hit the x root button, and then the number. But here, for me, it's math. And cube root, 27. Now, you can take the cube root of a negative number because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative three is actually negative 27, because this negative and this negative make positive, but then I multiply by a negative, which makes this negative. So I can take the cube root of a negative number. So the real, the rule is, if it is an even root, even index, um, then and a negative number in the radical, I cannot do it. Okay, if it is a negative under the radical and it is an odd index, that is okay. Okay, so cube root, fifth root, 
seventh root, et cetera. Okay, and now before we do some math with this, well, actually, let's answer this question right here. Which of these is not going to be a real number? Which one? D, yeah. So this is uh, positive, so that's fine. This one, the negative is outside the radical. This one is cube root of a negative. It's an odd root, so we're okay there. This is even root of a negative, so that is not a real number. Okay, before we move on to simplifying, I want us to make a list of our popular cube roots and square roots on your paper. Um, all right, so our square roots, or our squares, we'll say. So you have two squared, which is four. You have three squared, nine. Four squared is gonna be what? And five squared, six squared, seven squared, eight squared, nine squared, ten squared, eleven squared, twelve squared. Okay, you guys only do time tables up to twelve, but thirteen squared is one sixty nine. 14, 196, 15 times 15, 225. Okay, so if I take the square root of any of these numbers, I get a whole number. We want to memorize these because we're going to be using them a lot, this, these two modules. You also have perfect cubes. We're not going to be using them as much, but I want you just to memorize up to seven for this one. Okay, so this is going to be uh, two times two times two is going to be eight. 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216, and then 7 cubed is 343. Now, if I'm doing this, and I let's say I go to take the test for this, and I want to write these down, but I forget them, you can always just go like this. Okay, you can do that in your calculator and get this list here. So that's how I get this list. These are all my perfect cubes. So if I do the cube root, I get whole numbers. Okay. So let's go down to our example to do some simplifying. And then why didn't I put one squared or one cubed on this list? Because it's just one. So it's not really going to change anything when I do simplification. But we do know that square root of one is one. Cube root of one, also one. Fourth root, also one, et cetera. All right, so for some simplification, we're working with, these are all what we call perfect squares or perfect cubes. So we know in our list that six squared was 36. So here we say the square root of 36 is six. There's a negative in front of it, which is an implied negative one. So this is negative one times six, which is gonna give us a negative six. Okay, now when I have the square root of one over 49, I'm gonna split this into the square root of one divided by the square root of 49. Square root of one is gonna be one, square root of 49, Okay, now if you are at all confused right now with any of these, you need to go back and review your time tables because you should know these numbers. What times what is 81? Nine, good, so this is nine. Cube root of eight, two. Cube root of negative 125. So we said the cube root of 125 was five, but if it's negative, it's gonna be negative five. And then cube root of 1 over 343. So this would be the cube root of 1, which is still just 1. And then the cube root of 343, 7. All 
All right, now we're gonna do some operations with radicals. So radicals are going to act very similar to variables. So you're gonna, you can multiply them, you can divide them underneath the radical. So if I have two different numbers under the radical, go ahead and multiply them. So for this example here, if I had say, square root of two times the square root of three, I can just go ahead and do that, but I just leave it under the radical, square root of six. Um, what this is telling me here is that if I have two copies of the same one, like let's say square root of five times square root of five, well, that just ends up being square root of 25, which is just five. So for two copies of the same one, the radical just comes off. And then right here, you would multiply the numbers in front. Oh, that's wrong. That example. Multiply the numbers in front, and then the numbers are the radical. So let's say you had like 2 root 5 times 6 root 2. You would do 2 times 6 and get 12. And then 5 times 2 would stay under the radical as 10. Okay, then the division rules, we're just going to be looking at this first one right now. These two here we will deal with in module four. Okay, but the square root, um, you can split that into two or you can divide. So like, let's say I had square root of 10 over the square root of five. I can go ahead and do this, square root of 10 over five and get square root of two. I can work underneath the radical as long as the index is the same on both of them. So let's do some examples of that. So I have square root of 16 times the square root of 4. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply them both. 16 times 4. which is going to give me 64. And then I'm going to take the square root of 64, which is 8. Now I could, with these being perfect squares, I could go ahead and make that 4 times 2, get the same thing. That's fine. It's just easier to simplify just one time. So like for this example, for B, I have 2 root 45 times 6 root 5. I'm going to go ahead and do 2 times 6, which is 12. And then I want to do 45 times 5, which is 225. Was 225 on that list? Yeah. What was the square root of that? 15, yeah. So, and then if you ever forget, just go in your calculator, square root, 225, 15. So then this is 12 times 15 which is, I don't know, 180. Okay, then for C, so you have these both under the radical. So you got, I would just go ahead and go like this. Make one big radical, 1 eighth times 418, and then go across. So 1 times 4 would be 4, and 8 times 18, 144. And then those both happen to be perfect squares. So square, I would split that, square root of 4, over the square root of 144. What is the square root of 4? 2. And the square root of 144? 12. Can I reduce that? One six. Good. All right, now we're going to talk about simplifying radicals that are not perfect squares. Okay, so to do that, you're going to take the largest perfect square or cube out of the radical. 
Um, you can only add or subtract if the terms under the radical are exactly the same. You can multiply under the radical. So we're going to list these out again. I forgot that I had given you guys basically. So you have 2 squared is 4. We're just going to go ahead and list them out. And then your cubes, you had 2 cubed, 8, 3 cubed, 27, 4 cubed, 64, 5 cubed, 125, 6 cubed, 216, and 7 cubed, 343. Okay, so you can use this page as a chart when you guys are doing your homework. All right, so when I'm looking at my example three, I have square root of 147. When I go to do that, I'll give you guys a second to copy that. Okay, so if I go to my calculator and I take the square root of 147, I'm going to get the exact number times itself that is 147, which is 12.12435565. I don't want that when I'm simplifying. Okay, that's my exact answer. All I want to do is I want to write this in a reduced form, almost like you're reducing a fraction. So here's the steps to doing that. You're going to find the largest perfect square that will divide into 147 evenly. Then we're going to split the radicand into those factors and take the square root of the perfect square. So that's why we have this list here. So I'm going to start with a number that's less than 147, which would be 144, I know isn't going to work, 121. And that doesn't go in evenly. So I go down to 100, I know that's not going to work. 81. So I'm going on this list and I'm starting with a number less than that. And I'm just going one by one, 81, 64, 49, until I find one that works. Okay, so 81 doesn't work. Uh, 64 does not work. 49 does work. So it goes in evenly. So I say, okay, well, then this is going to be split like a factor tree to 49 times 3. So I go like this. 49 times 3 is 147. But when I do that and split them, I keep them under the radical. And then step 3, I take the square root of the perfect square. The square root of 49 is 7. So I cross this out and I do 7. And when I take the square root, there no longer is a square root symbol because I took the square root. So then I write this as 7 square root of 3. And to check that, if I look at this, remember I did the square root of 147? Well, if I type in my calculator 7 root 3, I'm going to get the same exact thing. Okay, so I'm able to reduce that and show that it's done correctly. So let's look at example four. Is there anything from that list? Let's take a look. So less than 80 would be starting at 64. 49. 
8 squared, 7 squared, 6 squared. No. 5 squared. No. 4 squared. There you go. So 16 times 5 gave us 84. So we're going to come over here to 80. We're going to split that into root 16, root 5. Then we take the square root of 16, which is 4. And then we say that this is 4, root 5. And then we can go ahead and check that. Square root of 80, and then 4, root 5. We get the same thing. All right, and you're not just going to see numbers under the radical, you are also going to see variables. Okay, so there's an acronym for the variable radicands. And that acronym is TIBO, T-I-B-O, which stands for if I have, let's say, an X to the 2 fifths, and I want to convert that into radical, the top of the fraction goes inside the radical. The bottom of the fraction goes outside the radical. So I put the x in the radical. The top of the fraction goes inside, so that becomes x squared. Bottom outside. So fifth root of x squared. And then I just want to show you guys one thing. If I have an x to the 1 half, and I put that in here, that becomes x to the first on the inside and a 2 on the outside. Both of those are understood. It's understood that it's to the first power, and it's understood that it's to the second power. So 1 half fraction exponent is just the square root. So let's look at example five. Okay, so we want to simplify square root of x to the six. So this has an understood root of two, so I'm going to add that in. And then I'm going to convert that to a fraction exponent. So this is going to become x to the top of the fraction comes from inside the radical, bottom of the fraction outside. And then we just divide that. Six over two is three. So this is x cubed. Now with 9x to the fourth, we're going to split that into square root of 9, square root of x to the fourth. So square root of 9 we know is 3. So we'll cross that out and put a 3. This is an understood second root. So that's going to become x to the top of the fraction inside the radical, bottom of the fraction outside the radical. So 4 over 2 will give us an x squared, and then bring down the 3. So notice, with the square roots, you're really just dividing by 2 Okay, on the exponent. Or you're just dividing by the radicand. If I look at my next example, that's cube root. And this becomes x to the top from inside, bottom from outside, 12 over 3, which is x to the fourth. So when it divides evenly, it's nice, nice and neat. When it doesn't, it's a little bit more work. Okay, so here we know that this is not an even number. It's x to the fifth. So let's say we go ahead and put that in a fractional exponent. That's going to be x to the 5 over 2, top from the inside, bottom from the outside. That does not divide evenly. So here's what we're going to do. Turn it into a mixed number. Do you guys remember how to do that? 5 over 2 is going to be what? 2 and a half. 
So when you do it as a mixed number, you're going to do this. X squared, X to the 1 half. So the whole part gets an X. Whatever's left over gets an X. Okay, then you're going to put the fraction back in the radical. Okay, so the x squared would come down as normal. x to the 1 half goes in the radical. So you have x, the top is 1, I don't need to write that. The bottom is 2, I don't need to write that. So that's x squared, square root of x. Okay, so let's do some examples or one example, and then we'll put everything together. Okay, so here we're going to simplify. So what I want to do with these letters, I'm going to split them first and do them separately. So I have cube root of A to the 7th, and then I have cube root of B to the 11th. Then I'm going to convert this to a fraction. So this is going to become a to the top will come from the inside, so that's 7. Bottom from the outside, so 7 over 3. What is that as a mixed number? 2 and 1 third. So this will be a squared. So we split that kind of. And then a to the 1 third. I don't need that lines. Oops. Okay, then I'm going to take the one third and I'm going to put that back in the radical. So that's A to the top is the first, and I'll write it there like that, fine. And the bottom outside, cube root. So cube root of A, and then the A squared comes down. Okay, now I'll work with the B. So I'll go B, the top. Inside, so 11. Bottom outside, so 11 over 3. What is 11 over 3 as a mixed number? 3 and 2 thirds. Oops. We need the 2 thirds to have its own B. So we have B cubed, B to the 2 thirds. So the fraction goes back inside the radical. So inside the radical, I have my base B. The top will go inside, bottom, outside. And then I'll bring the B cubed down. Okay, now this is pretty messy. So I'm going to take the numbers that are not in the radical. I'll write those next to each other. So that's A squared and B cubed. And then since these are both cube root, I can put them underneath the radical as well. So then I'm going to have a cube root of A to the first, so just A, and then a B squared. And I put the time sign in between just because I didn't want the three here and the three here to look like they were next to each other. All right, so now we're gonna put it all together with our numbers and our letters. Okay, so example eight is a cube root. So I'm gonna split this with my numbers and my letters. So we're going to go cube root of negative 243. Then I have a cube root of x to the 10th. And I have a cube root y to the 11. All right, so let's work with 243 first. It's cube root, so I'm looking at that perfect cube list. So I'm going to start with 125. No. Uh, 5 cubed. 4 cubed was 64. 3 cubed, 27. And that one works. So 27 times 9 gives us 243. Now remember, these are both cube root, so when I put this here, it's cube root. 
and try not to get that confused because this one can be confusing because nine is a square root, but we're not doing that, we're doing cube root. So cube root of 27 is three. So this is three cube root of nine. Okay, so my number's taken care of. I'm gonna go to my x. This is gonna be x to the top will be 10, bottom three. 10 over three is a mixed number. Three, yep, three. And what was the fraction? One third, three with the remainder of one. Okay, so then that becomes x cubed. And then this will go back in the radical. x to the first cube root. All right, and then the y, we get y to the 11 over 3. So that's going to be 3 and 2 thirds. So then you have a y cubed. And then we have here in the radical, the top will be 2, bottom 3. All right, now again, everything outside the radical, these guys, We'll write those next to each other. So we have a three, we have an X cubed, and we have a Y cubed. And then all of these are cube root, so we should be okay there. And that's cube root of nine, looks like X to the first, so just X and then Y squared. Notice our answer simplified is actually longer than what it started. That's okay. Again, simplifying is just another way of saying reduced. Okay, then our last problem in this section is a square root. Okay, so let's split that. So we have square root of 18 square root x to the ninth, square root y to the sixth. All right, so 18, what was a perfect square that went into there? Nine. How many times does nine go into 18? Two, so that's root nine, root two. That is three, root two. x to the ninth, what's the understood index here? Two. So this becomes a fraction, x to the nine over two. And what is that as a mixed number? Four and a half. So x to the fourth, x to the one half. One half is gonna go back in the radical, one half. Y to the sixth, understood root of two. And that's y to the 6 over 2. And that one actually gives us a nice just y cubed. Okay, so I'm looking at this line for everything. So if I write everything together, you have a 3, an x to the 4th, and a y cubed. 3, x to the 4th, y cubed. And then under the square root, you had a 2 and an x, and I don't need this two or this one here because we already know that that's square root.